Here for example two, we're going to be using your graphing utility, which is also known as a graphing calculator. And you need to, we're going to use this in parametric mode. We have not gone into parametric mode yet, so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go to your calculator, and you have to change the mode, so you click on the mode button. And you notice we, if you have a few down here, you have func, par, pol, sec. Well, function, that's your function, uh, mode that's why we use most of the time but we're going to go into parametric mode and what this is going to do is this is going to change it's going to change this screen right here you know here's where you graph something in rectangular form we're going to highlight the parametric and when we do that notice what happened here well this changed to an x sub 1 of t and a y sub 1 of t back on example 1 we had two equations so when you go into parametric mode when you graph you're going to have to graph two equations like so um, back to the example, we're going to use a graphing utility to graph the curves represented by the parametric equation and using the graph in the vertical line test for which curve is y a function of x. That means if your curve passes your vertical line test then it is yes a function. So if we look at a and we're going to plug in for x t and we're going to plug in y equals the square root of t then you need to plug in a t. Now your t notice is your right next to your green key it's your xt theta n button you're going to hit that and notice it doesn't give you an x anymore because you're in parametric mode it gives you a t so we go down to your y and we need the square root of t so we're going to say second square root t cursor out of it hit enter and then let's go look at our graph well here's your graph your graph goes out and then eventually, burp, let's move to our table here. Table, let's start at, let's start at zero here. Since our graph starts at zero. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Second table set, let's start at zero instead of 360. And if we go down, go down, go down, go down, go down, go down, go down. Notice your T values keep getting bigger. I'm not quite sure why your graph just stops, but I think it's because the, the uh, pixels are going up and it's going up at such a small rate that it's going to almost look like a straight line going to the right. But this graph does keep moving on. Um, if you go back to our table, and if you notice that if you go in the negative direction, well, get there, get there, get there, get there, get there, get there. Get there, get there. You have errors. That's because we don't have anything graphed over here on the left. So when we look at our graph, what we want to do is we're going to plot each of these points. So let's go back to zero. We're going to start at zero, zero. And then we're going to over one, up one. So let's plot these points. So we're going to say zero, zero, over one, up one. And then we're going to have the point um, over 2 up 1.4, over 3 up 1.73, so over 2 up 1.4, over 3 up 1.73, over 4 you're going to go up 2, and this graph keeps going to the right, and we need to make sure we put in our orientation, so your orientation is going to be these arrows going like so. So when we have our arrows going like this to the right, that means that we are, this shows your orientation. Now does this graph pass your vertical line test? Well, if I draw vertical lines through this graph, this would be, yes, it does pass it. So let's do the same thing for B. And let's graph these. So let's go back to your calculator and go back to the Y equals button. And we do t, and now instead of the square root of t, you're going to be doing t squared. So you get t squared instead. And let's look at what this graph does. Oh, hey. Now, our graph is only graphing what is on the right, but we know if we make a table, look at our table of values. This is also going to the left. So we need to make sure that we plot all of our points. You need to make sure when you go to your table, second graph, you're going to need to make sure you look at your points. So if you start at x equals negative 3 and go up 9, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, you need to make sure you plot these points as well. 
So we will go over here to the left, and we'll go back three, up nine, which is off the graph. Back two, up four. Back two, up one. Zero, zero. One, one, and over two, up four. And this graph is actually going to be coming from left. So our graph goes down. We actually get a parabola here. And it goes up. Oops, I should probably shouldn't have drawn that arrow. There we go. Get rid of it. And so we have a parabola. Now the orientation is going to from the left to the right. Because you would plug in a smaller value first. And it's going left to right. Now does this graph pass your vertical line test? Once again, you just draw some vertical lines. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Sure. This passes it also. So that shows that your curve y is a function of x.